Here we're just then talking about T.D. Jakes, you know, being a black person and trying to describe um, what kind of heritage he has and what kind of influences the way he speaks, right? It will be different for different people, right? For a white person, the problem will be exactly the same, you know, for a Caucasian, for a, Caucasian, for a, a, a nation, a Latino, it might be slightly different. So we all are influenced by the way we grew up. However, it's not supposed to be an excuse. You're just supposed to understand it enough to be able to gain mastery over it. We can also learn from other cultures, things that we see that we can use to better our message, right? So it's not as if that we are prisoners of our, of, our, of our upbringing. We're not. It's a matter of understanding it so you can gain mastery over it, right? So here we're just giving an example, you know, of uh, say, uh, what, what entails in black preaching and given an example of T.D. Jakes, how it has affected it, right? You know, the origin of, of black preaching comes from um, all the stories, you know, that, that people have heard, right? There's all our story of slavery, brought from Africa, you know, the experience of slavery itself, then came the message of hope, how to survive in it and live another day. I mean, all of that affects, you know, um, the way people preach, right? And in just talking about that, um, that it's not all just about the emotions alone, right? But the real thing about it that comes from a black preaching is the fact that we've gone through so much pain and that pain influences the way we sing, the way we preach. So that's why you see there's a uniqueness to people that sing it in South Africa because of the, the pain of appetite. Appetite. And the same thing goes for the slaves, in, 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 in slaves also. Then it comes from the pain of their heart, right? And we all have different pains also that might have nothing to do with our own bringing, you know, whatever it is, the experience of life we have. It all affects us. It affects the way we sing, the way we talk, you know. We should not be necessarily the prisoners to it, but our understanding of it can help us in being able to use it, you know, in being able to gain mastery in the way we communicate. Hey, Tobar and Chidi, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're all welcome. You know, just talking about uh, on to chapter 13 of the book today, and just talking about uh, uh, how to, the recipe, how to put the different ingredients of their communication together. And just talking about the importance of your upbringing, right? Our upbringing affects everything about us, right? But should not necessarily hold us prisoners, right? It's important to understand my upbringing. You just better to understand why I talk the way I talk, why I have the pitch that I have, why I have the tone that I have, right? Because when I understand it, then I can begin to use it. I can adapt it, right, to be able to, uh, achieve what I want, right? I, I'm not going to stop being me, but my understanding of me helps me to gain mastery over the things that are, over the thing that I want me to do, right? And I gave a typical example of Obama, you know, as he was beginning to contest for presidency, he visited Kenya, right? He openly accepted his uh, linkage to Kenya. He was not like Tiru, I'm America, I'm not Kenya. I and mean, his ability to embrace that part of his history helped him. He was able to use it to his own advantage. He didn't allow, in embracing it, he did not become a prisoner of it, but he, he embraced it to be able to, to gain mastery over it, right? And that's important for us all, right? We need to settle the accounts of where we're coming from because until we do that, we cannot gain mastery over it in our today and in our tomorrow, right? Go 